Hey guys, this is going to be a short, hopefully, but really concise video, and it's going to be really important to anyone that wants to diagnose two-stroke and four-stroke engines. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to get a top-down view. I've got a card here, and I went through a very methodical approach in an order that I believe to be uh, the most sensible in which to approach diagnosing an engine. It stops you jumping over the important parts, uh, it stops you missing things, and hopefully you can get something from this, and it'll avoid you running into possible issues when diagnosing your equipment. This is just my preference, and if you wish to move anything around, then go for it, do whatever you like, but uh, this is what I think is a good order, and uh, it's what I've stuck with. So, does it turn over? Gently turn the engine over, don't pull the pull cord hard, and just note that uh, if there's any resistance, don't pull through it, and you're looking for to see if the engine will turn, to see if it gets uh, locked up or stopped at a certain position, is there any drag, those sorts of things. But as I said, don't reef on the cord, don't pull it really hard, just a gentle rotation of the engine uh, gives you a bit of an idea as to what's going on. Checking the exhaust side skirt, pop the muffler off, have a look through the exhaust port. You want to see the skirt and you want to make sure there's no vertical scoring, make sure there's no transfer, make sure there's no damage from possible carbon buildup. And in fact, that takes us on to exhaust port, checking it for carbon. Engines can actually still run with uh, considerable blockages in the exhaust. However, you'll find that it might not run. If it does run, it might only idle and not reach wide open throttle. If it's there, it needs to be removed. At the very least, uh, it's a restriction. At the very worst, it can dislodge and it can score a piston skirt. Checking the spark screen for carbon too, same thing. Have a quick look, make sure it's clear, make sure you can see through it, make sure there's no restrictions. The carbon generally builds up if the engine's tuned too rich, if there's obstruction with the air filter, if the oil is cheap, or if it's uh, ran at too high of a ratio, stale old fuel can all, all lead to poor combustion and the result being an increase in carbon buildup. Uh, move on to the condition of the fuel tank. Just check that the fuel filter is attached. Have a quick look at the fuel filter. Note if there's any debris, there's dirt, there's vinyl-sized fuel in the tank. And then move on to the condition of the fuel. If there's fuel present, have a sniff. You will know it's an offensive smell. It's not nice. And uh, you will be able to differentiate between the smell of good fuel and bad fuel just by having a sniff. It, it, it's very obvious. But also check the condition in terms of the colour. Two-stroke uh, fuel should have a colour to it, but uh, they're generally red, blue, green, not brown, very dark, purpley colours. <laughs> you you want to make sure you stay away from that. Uh, where are we? Can do fuel? Uh, yeah, check the intake and air filter condition. So intake, uh, there can be certain blockages. There can be debris, there can be dirt. There can also be insect nests, wasps' nests, anything like that. They, they do make a good house for those sorts of insects. So having a quick look in there, just ensures that you're not getting any internal blockages or at least any intake blockages. And of course, the air filter, is it dirty? Is it oily? Uh, those things are going to make it run rich. They'll also cause your carbon increase and those, those sorts of things. So uh, have a quick look at it and just double check it. Just check the, the choke is fully closing, that it's actuating, that it actually seals the intake correctly. Uh, sometimes you can have running issues just through something as simple as the choke not closing. So have a quick look at that. Externally, it can be quite easy to pick up. However, if the flange that the choke is connected to, where it's connected to the carb, if there's a bit of a gap in there, you may find that that could be an issue too. Uh, linkages and cable freely moving, kind of the same sort of concept with the choke. Just make sure that actuating, pull the lever, uh, pull the trigger, adjust or, or move linkages, see if they're going to their full range of motion, seeing if they're getting caught up, whether they're returning freely uh, is good. Pop the engine on, take the spark plug out, and uh, just note the condition of the spark while uh, the spark plug while you're there. So those two are kind of together, but yeah, note the condition of the spark plug. Uh, make sure there's no carbon on there, or there's minimal carbon. Gives you an idea what's the plug color like, the brand, the make of plug. Is it right for the engine? Of course, check spark as well. And then add fuel to the intake and see if it runs. I mentioned intake because it gives the engine an opportunity to be lubricated on the bottom end. If you're putting it through the spark plug hole, you can do. Just aim it down the transfers. And pull it over and see if it runs. Now, uh, there are a few things to note. An engine that can run with a bit of fuel doesn't mean that the engine is good. Uh, how it runs is just as important as the fact that it is running. So you might find if you've got spark issues that it won't run evenly, smoothly. It might only run momentarily. It might run sometimes. It might not run other times. Uh, how does the engine sound? Is there knocking? Is there clanking? Those are the sorts of things. Just make a mental note. Be aware of it.
pressure and vacuum test. Well, in fact, okay, let's stop there for a sec. And let's just be aware that these first things, they'll only take you about three or four minutes. And they're very quick, very easy to do. It gives you a lot of idea about the condition of the engine. And then we start to delve just a bit deeper into it with some uh, specialist tools. These tools are essential for repairing and diagnosing engines. Two strokes in this case in particular. If you haven't got pressure and vacuum test and you're repairing an engine, even if it's just one, you're opening yourself up to a lot of financial loss if you aren't running that test. So uh, pressure and vacuum test just tests that the crankcase is airtight. You don't want to have any air leaking in a two-stroke a two-stroke crankcase engine. Four strokes different, and uh, th that tool can be used for so many different things as well. So worth getting a pressure and vacuum test. I've done many tests on my channel. You can see how to do them correctly. And then we do a compression test. Just note, if you're buying a compression test from your local automotive store, it's very likely going to be one for a larger capacity engine that can move more air. And thus, it might give you an inaccurate reading when you're testing small engines, outdoor power equipment, etc. So use a brand that's recommended. That's really important. And uh, again, I've gone over compressions. I'm not going to go into any more detail. Coil resistance test. Uh, so if you're working with a points and ignition system, yet yeah, you can do primary and secondary. And you can see how I've done that in videos as well. And if you're working with an electronic ignition, you're going to get possibly get slightly strange readings from your primary because the primary, uh, there is circuitry in there. And you'll find that there are electronic triggers and semiconductors. So you're, you're not going to get a good accurate reading on your primary, but you can still do the secondary and get a good idea as to where it should be. Again, have a look at the videos that I've uploaded already. I don't need to go into detail. And then start your methodical diagnosing. Um, so if you see that there is scoring on the skirt, that's one thing. But why is it scoring? What's caused it? What's led to it? Uh, just running over a few options. It could just be poor stale fuel. It could be a lack of lubrication. It could be overheating, could be poor tuning. And then you'd find out what is the cause. Maybe it's just as simple as a blocked fuel filter. Um, so that's when you go into a bit more detail and I've written down, start your methodical diagnosing. Four stroke, I've done that as well. Lots of things, there is a lot of crossover, but there are a few different things as well. We'll go over it nice and quickly. Same principles apply for turning over. Check that there's oil and the condition of the engine oil, uh, crankcase oil. You will find that good condition oil is generally white and it can actually be quite hard to see on the dipstick. Or if you're looking through a sight glass, if it's new, it can be a bit tricky. When the oil turns to be a bit yellowy, uh, it's a bit of an indication as to how old it is. Not all the time, but it can be. And then when it starts to go browny, blacky, sludgy, yes, it's not ideal. It needs to be replaced. And also note when you're putting the uh, dipstick onto a piece of tissue, is there any shiny metallic parts inside there? Things that you need to be aware of um, that could cause you further engine issues or, or that could be the cause of the engine issue in the first place. Same thing, fuel tank, note the condition, fuel filter and all that. Uh, condition of the fuel as well. Same things apply, although... With a four-stroke engine, there's no mix, there's no oil mixed in there. So it might be a bit easier to differentiate whether the fuel is good or bad in terms of visually, but the smell of stale fuel uh, is very pungent and it's quite hard to mistake. Uh, spark screen for carbon, four-strokes don't generally produce the same, anywhere near the same amount of carbon that a two-stroke would. However, if it's burning engine oil, if it's passing the rings, uh, then that could cause you an issue. If people have been running two-stroke in there for some reason, whatever reason, maybe they made a mistake, then that can cause blockages too. Just something to worth noting. And while you're in there, it gives you the opportunity to look through the uh, exhaust of the muffler and just see, again, is there any blockages? Is there a waspness? Is there dirt? Is there debris? Is there mud in there? It allows you to remove it. Uh, where are we? Muffler for blockages, carbon. Yeah, so um, you can always pop the muffler off and just have a quick look in there. There will be carbon in there, but uh, the degree is not normally the same as there is generally on a two-stroke. Um, muffler of rockage. Intake, yeah, that's the same. Same principles apply as last time. Same principles with the choke fully closing. Linkages are freely moving. And then we check engine, uh, or turn the engine on, for check for spark, check the plug, um, condition, uh, gap, make, model, those sorts of things. And then add fuel to the intake, see if it runs. Not so important with a four straight. You can add it straight into the spark plug hole if you so wished. Uh, the engine's lubricated via the bottom. And then, uh, again, that's kind of like where you start to have more specialist pieces of equipment that you do need uh, for four-stroke diagnosing to do it efficiently. So those things, very simple, very quick, and uh, easy to do. And then you've got core resistance. Generally, they're in the same range. I'm not going to go into it. You can check my other videos. Uh, same thing applies for points and condenser style ignition systems or the electronic ignition systems. And then we have valve clearances. Of course, very, very important. 
that's kind of like an engine will need, well, people would generally say, spark, fuel, air, and compression. But there are a few other things that need to be included in there, generally for two strokes and four strokes. Four strokes, of course, valve timing, valve condition, valve sealing. And then uh, with the two stroke, you've got the skirt. The skirt can wear but uh, and cause you sealing issues. Not so much of an issue, but it's something to bear in mind. Um, so we have that. And of course, spark, not only the strength of the spark, but the timing of the spark of the key shed. Uh, if on the four stroke that the chain has jumped a tooth on the cam, those sorts of things can cause you running issues too. Uh, leak down test is, is solely a four stroke test. It's basically monitoring how much air goes in and how much is coming out to give you a reading of what is or is not acceptable. Generally around about 10 to 20 percent leak down is, is good. Less than 10 is excellent. Above 20 you're starting to run into possible issues and they need to then be addressed. Uh, the leak down test is not used on a two-stroke engine. It's only used on four and you don't use a pressure and vacuum test on a four stroke engine, you use the leak down test. And then from there you go on to methodical diagnosing. As I said before, if something comes up, then you can then go into that into more detail, find out why it's occurred, rectify that issue and move from there. I guess the most important thing here, what I'm trying to get across is diagnosing is so important and too many people throw parts at equipment rather than actually diagnosing, testing, confirming and checking. I think it's fair to say that we're getting a, we're becoming a bit of a lazy society and uh, we just want quick, easy fixes and we're not often prepared to put the time and effort into uh, repairing and fixing. And if that's you, and that's totally fine, that there's nothing wrong with that at all, uh, take it to a mechanic. Don't start throwing money at it. Don't start. And if you're not prepared to buy these pieces of equipment, the pressure and vacuum test, the compression test, again, take it to someone that's going to do it, that's going to do it, know what they're doing, and you're going to say, you will save yourself money, even if you feel like you want to do it, if you're not prepared to put the effort in, my advice is just don't waste your time.